Good morning, wherever you are, good afternoon or evening. My name is David DiCapua, and I am blessed with a whole bunch of beautiful granddaughters who requested that I put some of my recipes on videotape, and that's what this is about. We're gonna be putting together Grandpa D's meatballs, a little unorthodox. I don't use beef, pork, and veal. I use ground dark meat turkey, because dark meat is fat, the fattest meat of the animal, and there's a saying in the culinary world that fat is flavor, and that's what I was looking for in my meatballs, plus the texture that lends itself to good, moist, absorbing meatballs. The ingredients will be ground turkey, ta-da, and uh, I've used it for years, and I've never, never, it's never failed me. I have about five, five and a half, six cloves of garlic. I will crush them into the meat. I have also a half a bunch of pars parsley, which I've chopped up. A couple eggs, and I don't use uh, breadcrumbs, I use panko. And there's two cups of panko, and I will tell you that I've, I've been obligated because the girls asked me to do this. I ordinarily do it on the fly. So I may be modifying some of these ingredients. Uh, if not, uh, hopefully it'll all work out. You ready? I'm yeah. gonna add the panko, two cups. I, have, I use jumbo eggs. It's not terribly different from the regular size, but I like it. That. Salt and pepper. pepper. Salt. And crush the garlic into the mixture. I'm gonna put five more cloves, four or five more cloves. Oh, look at Roland in his PJs. Hey, are you recording? Yeah, I'm. Yeah. The music in the background is provided by the DiCapua Family Orchestra, <laughs> led by Ama Jamal. We can't claim credit for somebody else's <laughs> orchestral talent. Sure we can, yeah, yeah. I just did. I use a lot of garlic, but that's just because I like garlic. You're a little strange. Like a question, yeah. No, you're not. You're all wonderful. I should also have a disclaimer for my granddaughter Leanne, who may be watching this, because she said I offended her by saying something about her in the last video. Oh. <laughs> That's why she's not invited here today. Huh? I'm just kidding. I'm seeing her for brunch in another. Ah. Oh yeah. Two and a half hours. Yeah. Now the fun part. It's mandatory that you not wash your hands before you do this. So. <laughs> <laughs> now I had them washed this morning. I had them out. I had them washed. Okay. Them out. <laughs> now, now the mixing part. Ready? It's also imperative that you leave your rings on while you do it. Well, it cleans the ring. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> uh, I also sometimes add milk to this, and I do that because. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to form. You can't have formless, sloppy meatballs, right, Jessica? This is correct. What are you doing? I'm taking pictures. <laughs> You're just constantly on video. <laughs> How are you doing, Mary? Just nod your head. <laughs> good. Oh, You're I'm... such a good helper, Evelyn. And she's joining us on, what is this, Skype? It's FaceTime. Whatever. And your great grandchildren, Evelyn oh, and Roland. Oh yeah, there's Roland and Evelyn and and wherever Leo went. You can see. You can Hi see, kids. You can see that the family has been relatively prolific. <laughs> oh my God, she's so cute. Hi oh, Ev, yeah. how you doing, sweet face? I'm already four. You're already four. Already four. So are we. <laughs> okay, here comes here comes the really good part too because you're going to. Uh, uh, the size of the meatballs. Mm -hmm. you know, I, my, my hand size is different from yours. And uh, that's that's a little large, but you, it, it's... If you're, if you're serving spaghetti with like one meatball, that will do. There's a, different ways of cooking this meat also. You can put it on a cooking sheet and put it in the oven and uh, it will cook nicely. I like using olive oil and frying it because it gives a little nice crisp patina to the exterior. A crust. Mm. Yes. If you turn the stove on, it's the upper yes, sir. right. Right. Oh gosh, okay, yes. The other right. What? Oh. 
No, you got, you got it. You got it. Okay. You got it. You got it. No, you got it. You got it. I have olive oil already in the frying pan, and we should start hearing the sizzle in just a moment. I will tell you one thing: when you're doing this, be gentle with these things. You don't want to press them <laughs> because you want to leave them as porous as possible so that they will absorb it. Did you get out of my frying pan? Sorry. Well, you were so much your mother. I was making room. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead. Go back to it. Okay. You're doing a wonderful job. Uh, anyhow, it, it, you want the meatball to be porous enough to absorb. And when the Italian immigrants came to this country, they were poor. Most of them came from the steerage on the ship, which is way down at the bottom. And they came to this country with very little. And when they cooked, they did it very frugally, so they used as much stale bread as possible. As time went on, they began eat using less and less of the dry bread and more and more the meat. And as a consequence, uh, the meatballs were not as absorbent. So that's one of the reasons that I, first of all, lightly roll them, but also I use um, panko. Now the next thing we'll do is complete that. And, and you know what? We're basically done with the meatballs. We now have my recipe. Okay with that, Mayor? Good. <laughs> good, good, okay. Mary, Mary's in Cincinnati doing her Cincinnati thing. Let's give them her exact address. No, <laughs> no, let's give her, let's give them their, her phone number. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. I'm gonna let you do this because I feel like I'm gonna mess it no, up. No, 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 you're doing fine. Okay. You know what else I'm gonna do that a little? Huh. This is called Parmigiano Reggiano. Yeah, unless you're Meredith and you say Parmesan. <laughs> I want to be her first little meatball. Hey, hey! That's perfect! It looks just <clears throat> like ours. Hey, Mayor, I, I meant to add the Parmigiano Reggiano to the mix, and I didn't. So now I put a little hole in the middle of my meatballs, and I'm going to put them in there. It's hot. Please be careful. I'm doing this because I should have done it when I was mixing the meatballs. Sounds stuffed meatballs. Yeah. Start turning them over now. Oh goodness. Okay. I can do this. I'm gonna nail this part. We'll be both when we get there. Okay. I'm gonna about six per pound. Those are big new balls. How long are these? Oh no. Yeah. You can never have too much oil. <laughs> Hi Leo! Hi Tom! Hi! Do you have a sword down the back of your pajamas? <laughs> It needs to be easily accessible. So he yeah. pulls it out. He's a ninja. You know, a ninja I don't baby. think my arm bends like that, buddy. Ah, that seems, I love it! It's a little cumbersome. <laughs> I don't have a sword. I have a knife. Crust. That you don't get by baking. Yes. I don't think I've ever baked a meatball. I don't think I would ever bake I a meatball. Have, well, I have uh, never made meatballs from scratch. I think I would buy, like, and then put them in the oven. Oh, really? Like, maybe not the best way. Put it what? What would you do, Jess? Oh, like, buy frozen ones, and then I may cook them in the oven. But you're, you're correct, they don't Star get it. Starbucks right. meatballs? <laughs> Go around the other side. <laughs> I've never watched you make them, so I never knew. <laughs> you know what, Jess? I gotta tell you something. I'm going to tell a story now about your Aunt Gina. Okay. Walked into her house one day and I saw an empty jar of ragu sauce. Oh my god. And I haven't been in her house since. <laughs> was it recently? Because I feel like... No, it was 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen you there. <laughs> I, forgot, I never got to meet Stephen. <laughs> Stephen's in his 30s. <laughs> oh, is he really? Yes. Right. We're all old now. Yeah, old. Michael's 25. Hi, tell me about old, sweetheart. <laughs> By the way, we don't really I'm have... not old. <laughs> Do that to me. Capiche? Capiche. Let me talk about some words in Italian that are mandatory. Okay. okay. Hi. Good night. Hi. Where's he going? <laughs> she said, hi, Rachel. Capiche means that you understand. Yes. Right. But you know those words anyway. It's like Spanish, you know. Buongiorno. Hmm? Buongiorno. That's yeah. Good day, Buongiorno. Right? Buongiorno yeah. is morning. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, that's enough of the Italian lesson. Okay, now I'm gonna take those meatballs 
and I'm gonna slice them and split them. I'm making meatball sandwiches. You know how to do that. I'm gonna put meatball on the buns, and then I'm gonna put mozzarella, not mozzarella, mozzarella on them. I'm sorry you're not here for that. Should I mail you that? No, because you shared your recipe, so I mean. <coughs> you can do it yourself, yeah, good. I'm gonna let these cool down so I can cut them. And I think for the most part that we are done with the cooking part of the meatballs. Um, so there, okay? Yay! What do you want to do next, Mayor? Whatever you want to do. Well, I was, I was saying we could do you know, chicken uh, papakash. And, and that's relatively easy also. God bless you, I love you to pieces. I kiss your kids and give Tom a hug. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye, kids. Bye, bye. Our church is doing it. And then it. you're gonna enter a nunnery there. God, no. I think you should. No. Yeah. Why would I be a nun? I know your brother's ultimately gonna be a priest. That was I forecasted that about 20 years ago. Yeah, that's Michael. Yeah. And then he'd just be a priest, and then what do you do about that? Nothing. You suffer. You suffer. I gotta tell you a story about my father. Do you remember my dad? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Anyhow, when I, I worked with him in the store, and there was a traffic stop on West Boulevard just before Western, just before he got to Lorraine and St. Ignatius Church. And uh, he would, uh, we were stopped for the red light. Now, my dad was not the most verbose person in the world. He says, uh, I understand that you have a girlfriend and you're starting to date girls. And I, I said, uh, yeah, yeah. He said, well, I have a word of advice for you. Whatever, whatever you're thinking of doing, don't. And, he, and the light changed. He says, you can get a disease. And he kept on going. <laughs> <laughs> and that was dad. I, I don't want you to get into the sauce. Uh, I've had this before, and it's you can add stuff to it, but it's, it's not bad. Okay. And for what purpose? I used to love to do this. Give it to a grandchild after I've broken the seal and let them open it. It's not working. Do you want me to try? No. And then I'd say, I can't get this. Would you do this for me? Let me see if I can do it. Let me see. Well, I've already loosened it. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. I'm so strong. Yeah. Look at me. All those hours at the gym paying off. You guys hungry? We can take them home if you want to put them in aluminum. I'll put them in an aluminum foil. We've already discussed We've, that they we will be naked. eating. Mm -hmm. We will be eating. Okay, good. Uh, here, honey. Where are your cups? Oh, the tallest cabinet. No wonder I didn't. Okay. Oh, gosh. Use your muscles. I'm, st <laughs> I'm strong, I promise. I was thinking of hosting the uh, Cousins event. That's one way of getting myself invited. If it's I not just you that's not invited. <laughs> I don't care about the others. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. That's really good. What was that? That's really good. Mm -hmm. Good. Capiche? Capiche. Capiche Mundo. This is so good. This is like the best breakfast. I never forced them to eat all their food because I figured, you know, they didn't want it. I'm not going to force them. <coughs> Your mother taught me about that when we were in a French restaurant in Montreal. And I kind of <coughs> pressed her to finish a French meal, which she thought was gross. Well, yeah, because it's French. So we went out in the hallway. Sounds delicious. And she upchucked the whole thing all over the floor of the mall. <laughs> she Le she le taught you. Lesson learned. <laughs> well, that went well. I'm so happy. I'm happiest when I'm eating. One of the stories I should I, can I, would you like to hear the story about how my grandfather DiCapo came to this country? Yes, sir. Okay. This has been documented by certain family members who are no longer with us, rest their souls. But he was uh, the only son of the DiCapua family in uh, Alpina, a portion of uh, north of Naples and east. And they had a farm, a big farm, and they had olive groves and they had cattle. And the cattle <coughs> they would take uh, into, in the spring would take up into the hills when the grass was just growing and fresh. And they carried guns to shoot off those predators of cattle. Italian like cowboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the Lone Ranger? Mm -hmm. uh, this was Captain Kizadich. 
I just made that up. Anyway. Yeah, I was like, is that a real name? <laughs> but in case, uh, he was he was headstrong. He was the only son, and he did pretty much what he wanted to do, and to the point where he fell in love with the foreman's daughter, whose name was Victoria Infante, mm -hmm. my paternal grandmother. And because he was at a certain station of life, and this is very European, this happened all throughout mm -hmm. places, he was discouraged from marrying beneath his station in life. Mm -hmm. And he goes, hey. And he kidnaps her. Took off with her, right? Well, did he That's kidnap her? Was it consensual? Well, <laughs> was she on board or together. did he like, well, steal they had, her they away? Had, they had eight children together. <laughs> well, but that, that's not that's the, still not a clear answer. <laughs> Is this being recorded? <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> Any, anyhow. Oh, God. So they, <laughs> they kicked him out of the family. They disowned him. Now, he had friends who were educated and who had gone to, been enticed to come to the United States by Andrew Carnegie. He was building steel factories on, in, in uh, western Pennsylvania around Pittsburgh, Sharon, Farrell. And he went there and he worked in the still mills with his friends. Until one day he got into kind of an argument with the foreman and he hit him in the back of the head with a shovel. Thought he killed him. He didn't. But he took off. And he no longer was welcome at the steel factory. Yeah, I can't imagine he would be. <laughs> but he ultimately opened up uh, a cheese factory. And oh. he would buy raw milk from the Amish farmers there. And he was—he had a business where he was making the, the, the cheeses that uh, Italians eat, some of which you've seen here today. And uh, one day, uh, they were, my grandmother, who was there alone, was visited by the Black Hand. You know what the Black Hand is? The Mafia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they said, you need protection. And she says, no, we don't. And uh, My husband has do, a shovel. They go to the police. And most of the police there in that time country were Irish because they came to this country they spoke English mm -hmm. yeah. and they got civil service jobs firemen cops mm -hmm. whatever and the chief of police says you Italians take care of your own problems and my grandfather went hey <laughs> <laughs> he got his buddies together and I shouldn't even allow this to be documented because I think all these people are deceased and nobody will be able to dispute and dis dis <laughs> reason to document yeah it. no one can go to jail now yeah <laughs> statute of limitations it's, up. it's definitely up <laughs> but these 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 uh, black hand guys all lived in the same house well one night my grandfather and a bunch of his buddies set the house on fire oh yeah and as these guys came out of windows and doors kachinga 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 they didn't have problems with the black hand until years later when um, my uncles were walking down the street. They were probably adolescents. Uh -huh. This beer wagon comes over the, off the street and down, down the walking path toward the boys. And they get out of the way just in time. And my grandfather said, we're going back to Italy. He says, I can defend myself, but when they're attacking my family. You know, they say the mafia doesn't attack the family or the wives. Bullshit. They went back to Italy for seven years. Uh -huh. And my, his, my grandfather's family gave him back cattle, his rights to everything. And then his cattle got hoof and mouth disease. Mm -hmm. So they had to put down the whole herd. And he said, let's go back. So they came back to America uh, and raised their five sons and three daughters. And I went there for, for a family reunion this summer. And I was told that I was the third oldest member of the family surviving. Well, we'll try to keep that going. <laughs> <laughs> so I was raised away from that uh, in mo mostly a polyglot Anglo community mm -hmm. where I met your grandmother, Linda, who was fascinated by the fact that I was one of those crazy Italians. Mm. I want to hear about your mom's side of the family. From oh, home. yeah. My grandfather was one of the chiefs of his village in Lebanon. During the time when the Turks uh, were running the entire Mediterranean, the Arabic Mediterranean, all the way from Ar Armenia all the way down to Morocco, Turks were Muslim, 
and they did not give uh, Catholic Arabs um, this, the same opportunities to succeed. And my grandfather, which is typical of a lot of Lebanese, was very, very uh, ambitious to do things with his life. He came to America. Three, his three older children were born in Lebanon. Uh, Claire, uh, Mary, and George. And the last came to Western, I mean, Eastern Pennsylvania, the other side of Pennsylvania. And he went door to door with a backpack, selling uh, housewares, needles, thread. And he did well enough that he'd go back periodically and, uh, and visit his family. But my grandmother, who was a seamstress and a very good one, uh, sewed clothing, repaired clothing, and, and supported her family back in Lebanon in that way. The Lebanese people are very resourceful. He did so well that he ultimately decided to open up a general store. And I think he sold everything from cars to kerosene. So he was the general store of that coal mining town called Wimber, Wimber, Pennsylvania. And he put all five of his daughters through college. That was like the 1910s and 20s, when women were not be educated beyond certain levels of the, the elementary school. And uh, his two sons, uh, Solomon David Solomon, uh, was a physician and the chief of staff of some pretty good sized hospitals in Pennsylvania. And George, who was the patriarch, the elder son, went on to be a very successful uh, young in a lot of businesses. But the Lebanese people in this country uh, take, took advantage of this country and democracy uh, and, and used it to, to, to be very successful. Oh, I have treats for you guys. <laughs> All right. That look of panic. Don't forget your wallet, your glasses, your cell phone, your keys, your ass. Grab something to drink. I have beer, wine, water. <laughs> it is 10 a.m. <laughs> it's time to drink a cup of coffee. What did she say? <laughs> it's 10 a.m. <laughs> well, it's got to be 5 p.m. somewhere. <laughs> Now they say that good chefs do not have microwaves in their kitchen. That's bullshit. <laughs> Leanne's wedding, which I call, uh, let's see what I call this. This was a destination wedding in frigid, frozen, <laughs> thinly frickin' Ohio. During, during a, a pandemic. Oh, I thought it was lovely. It was, a, it was lovely. It was, it was cold. a great time. I say it every time, but I love your silverware. Good. about well, Rachel? <laughs> no, I just moved in. She, she's a breeder. Oh my insulted god. Whenever I come. <laughs> See? Now you're ready for a little vodka? No. <laughs> Not quite. Jessica is. She's the drinker. <laughs> you like know, it's nice to share some of the insults with someone else, so thank you for coming. It's not an insult, it's an observation. <laughs> and I will tell you that. A lot of people don't know that Aunt, Aunt Rebecca is is into the sauce a lot too. <laughs> you can tell her I said that. <laughs> we'll be right back after this commercial. <laughs>